Hello all you English 4 VT students. I've been looking at your comma homework practice and it seems like a lot of you are struggling. So I decided that we would do a tutorial video over how to practice these. So um, let's take a look at these sentence by sentence. Now you notice that there are some green highlighted words and we'll go over that, but most of the commas, there's 20 of them that we need to add, are in yellow. And then I have it linked to the rule. So let's look at the first one. With her mortarboard mortar firmly on her head, Tammy took her place in the graduation procession, which was held on May 12, 2009. Now, when you have words at the beginning of a sentence, such as with or when or as, these are kind of clues to you that it's going to be, uh, well, there's going to be a comma that you need to do. So I'm going to click on this one and it gets us to rule number two, which is the introductory clause. So these green words are, are introductory clause signal words. There's a more formal word for it, but just so you know that at the beginning of phrases like this, you're going to have to put a comma at the end of them. All right, and then we have another one over here, graduation procession. You see the word which? That's another one that's going to let us know that uh, you're going to need to put a comma there. All right, so this one is rule number four, which is non-essential. That means you can take it out and it still makes sense which was held on May 12, 2009, does not have to be in there and it still makes sense. All right, let's look at the second sentence. She told her mother, Louisa, that she wanted to be the first in the family to get a college degree, comma, which would also help her get a good job. Now there needs to be a comma before and after Louisa because we look at here, it's rule number six, which is a direct address rule. All right, so you need to put one before and after. And then you have which again, so you know you're going to be putting a comma here, and that's going to be for rule number four, which again is the non-essential phrase. All right, so you need to put one at the beginning, and if there was more a sentence at the end, then you'd put one at the end of that phrase. Next sentence, in her mind, comma, Either you could get a degree after high school, comma, or you could get a degree later, comma. But eventually, everyone in the United States would need a college degree. All right, so these are going to, this one is going to be uh, number two because in her mind, I should have highlighted in here and made it green because it's, like the other ones. All right, so in her mind, you can take that off and you don't need it. So either would get you a degree after high school. That's a complete sentence. So you have to, that's an a independent class, and then you have a conjunction and a comma. You could get a degree later, another independent clause, so you put a comma there, and a conjunction. Eventually, everyone in the United States would need a college degree, so that's complete sentence as well. So that's all going to be the same rule in the Bennett Clause, which is number one. All right, we have a clue here, when, so we know that there's going to be, at the end of that phrase, a comma. So when the chance came for her to go to college, comma, and pay for most of it herself, comma, this is going to be a different rule. This one's going to be a rule four because you could take that out and pay for it, most of it herself. You could take that out. So you need to make sure you put a comma there. She decided it was a chance she could not afford to pass up. Next sentence. Each course she took in her ambitious undergraduate curriculum was another triumph for her. So if we took out in her ambitious undergraduate curriculum, it would still be a complete sentence. So this is going to be a rule number four, but you have to put one at the beginning and one at the end. All right. Let's look at the next sentence. Another 15 weeks of reading, comma, staying up late at night writing, comma, studying, 
comma, and sitting unco in uncomfortable desk never scared Tammy. Now, some of you might have put uh, one right here uh, after night, and I won't mark it wrong if you did. It just is read differently. All right, so this is rule number three, which is items in series. All right. Uh, there we go. Uh, we have another one of these phrases where it uh, has a signal word. As she marched off the stage, comma, Tammy clutched the diploma in one hand and hurried, hurled her mortarboard into the crowd with the other. All right, so uh, because this is an introductory phrase, then, or intro clause, it's a number two rule. All right, almost done here. She yelled, comma, yes, I made it. Okay, you, whenever you have uh, the pronoun and the verb, and then you have a direct quote, you need to put a comma. Uh, when she got through the crowd and reached her family, okay, so you have the signal word when, so we know we, know we need to have a comma here. She screamed, comma, because of the quote, Mom, I did it. All right, now, I could have counted this one here as one, uh, but I figured 20 of 20 commas is at least good enough. But if you put one here, I wouldn't count against it. All right, well, hopefully this helps.